Hello everybody, welcome back to the shop and the F14 project. Um, kind of out here figuring out some stuff as far as hinges and internal structure and just kind of overall racking my brain trying to figure this stuff out. Um, so I've got the, these are all just balsa mock-up parts and not the actual stuff so don't get all freaked out. Um, the aft sub spars here, main spars here, all the balsa wood mock-ups, they've been adjusted to fit and then notched so they just notch right in here with the uh, with this sub spar and everything's all hunky dory ready to go. Um, nice thing about the way, <laughs> I actually got pretty lucky with this actually, it's, I'd rather be lucky than good any day, but um, it just so happens that when I left this bottom trailing edge a little long, it gave me the perfect surface for where the end of these flap hinges have to butt up. So when I get ready to, to close this thing up, all I've got to do is um, kind of get all the structure glued to each other, tack it all in there, or get it set in place. And then when I go to glue all this, these hinge supports and all that stuff in there, basically glue them down Make sure they're 90 degrees to this flange, and then make sure they're uh, they're flush with the end of it, and you're done. There's no jigs or anything to have to do with it. It all just goes in there, just like that, nice and easy. Um, I said I'd rather be lucky than good any day, but uh, <laughs> just so happens that worked out. Um, so I got a couple servos kind of laying up in here. Again, they're just servos for mock-up. Uh, just kind of racking my brain on how to do these things. My original plans were to use a pair of Fergelli linear actuators, um, similar to like what I did on the wing panels for the sweep actuators, but I was going to use those for the leading edge slats because they're about the same price of, as a regular servo and they're, they're pretty compact. Problem is, is once you get out here to the, like the last third of the wing panel, the last half of the wing panel towards the tip, you start running out of space pretty quickly, um, especially with standard size servos which is what I prefer to run, but it, it's not necessary. I think JR's got a 9411, which is kind of like uh, in between a, a mini and a, and a standard. It's like a mid-size servo, I guess you could call it. And it's got a pretty good torque rating and it's digital. So that's, that could possibly be used. But um, because there's this, because I moved this spar forward so much, that really removes a lot of the room that I thought I would have for those, those linear actuators. So I've kind of got two options on what I can do for uh, um, rectifying that situation. Uh, one of them is I can just run conventional servos in front of the uh, the main spar and have two more hatches at the bottom, which I really don't like. I hate hatches. They just they did, I think they detract from the, the appearance of the airplane. Um, but if you're really good at fitting hatches. It doesn't really matter. Really. <laughs> you can you can actually make them look pretty dang decent and realize. And there's some of those guys, man. They can just make those things where you can't even see them. Um, so that's that's one option. Two servos in the front of the spar, and uh, really short linkages, and then two hatches on the bottom. Or another option I have, which is similar to what I'm going to be doing on the, uh, the spoilers, is a torque tube, a carbon woven. Uh, no, uh, a biaxially woven carbon tube or rod, whatever you want to, however you want to look at it, something really thick wall like those the vertical spin ones I showed you earlier, something like that, and then have three or four supports that key into the main spar that are probably they'll probably ride on like a, uh, I'm not gonna do ball bearings because ball bearings are heavy. They're probably like a, a very thin, uh, very thin like Delrin or uh, HDPE plastic bushing or bearing, whatever you want to call it, that that carbon rod or tube would, would ride in. And then there'll be two arms, possibly three, for uh, the push rods for the for the, leading, the slat actuators or to the slat control, or har control arms or whatever you want to call it. And then what would happen is you would have one servo. That's it. Um, so you'd have one servo operating that torque tube and then as it pushes the slats forward, it would guarantee the slat goes out evenly every time. 
Uh, you won't have to worry about getting a matchbox in there. So I really like that idea because it it it, uh, it saves a little bit of a cost because now you're getting rid of a servo and actually getting rid of two servos, one per wing. So you're actually saving for about 300 bucks right there. But it's going to put <laughs> more work on me because all of that stuff has to be installed before the wings can be closed up. Um, but I think if it's done done correctly, it would be just as reliable as two servos, if not more reliable. Um, so it, it's kind of an interesting option that, uh, or an idea that I have to look into. Uh, it'd be really simple to, I think it'd be really simple to, to build up, especially once you got all the, the CAD files or everything can get chopped out of that CNC wire pretty quickly. Um, another option I actually had about doing is if you put an overkill of a servo on the flaps, you could actually run uh, push rods from the flaps to that, that torque tube as well. So you could have the two flap servos operating both the flaps and the, uh, the slat torque tube. So no matter what, you would have something to push that slat out there. Um, but if one server ever froze up, you'd probably break that torque tube and then you're going to be in a real, a real heap of a trouble trying to get in there and fix that. You basically have to replace the wing or really cut into it. Um, but I'm kind of liking the, the one servo and the torque tube deal like what I'm going to be doing for the, for the spoilers. So that's pretty much what I'm at at the moment. Uh, this is, this spar is actually a little undersized at this end and a little thick on this end, which I don't know how exactly how that happened, but whatever. It uh, I've already corrected the CAD file, so it should should work out. Um, I'm getting there slowly. You can see there's a whole lot of room over here. This is an 8411. It just barely fits in there, so uh, kind of makes things a little bit different. A little, a little difficult, but a little easy at the same time. Um, what I'm thinking of doing is, on the servos here, you'll just have basically a hardwood block that attaches, or a hardwood block or plate or a plywood plate or something that'll get high sold to these two spars and then the servo will kind of come up and get, have like a nail bracket, like a BVM flush mount servo or whatever bracket. And then uh, it'll get screwed to that hardwood plate or the box or whatever. So it's not a whole lot of room, but there's enough room. So then I'll, I'll, uh, I'll CNC cut some some plates out here and then here that'll get high sawed into uh, onto the, the wing skin. And then I'll have little corners on the bottom to, to mark the position of where to, to score the skin so you can pop those right out. But getting there slowly is just a, a matter of time. Luckily, I'm not planning on putting slats in this particular wings. Uh, I'm just worried about getting the airplane flying, so it's going to be basically flaps, spoilers, elevons, rudders, and that's all the the control surfaces that it will have other than the wing sweeping gear and all that stuff. So these wings will be a lot a lot simpler not having to do with all the, the slat stuff. Um, but then again, you never know. I might get ambitious and have enough materials left over and not enough stuff to do something else and I might actually just go ahead and start uh, start figuring out all the slat stuff and all that good goodness because I can at least do it on figure it out on this wing and get everything installed install it in the right wing close up the wing panels get them out and then I've at least got it in there I don't have to use it but it's in there so anyways that's what I've been doing basically all day head scratching um, if you notice, the last time y'all saw these, they were kind of nice and not chunked up. These have gone through about four different changes, and these are basically the, the final shapes, revisions of them. Um, there are some little things like these little areas that are sticking out into the wing. Those won't be there, but anyways, it, it, this is pretty much what the structure is going to look like other than some servo mounts and all that stuff that I haven't got drawn up yet that I'm not looking forward to doing. So, one step at a time, we're getting there. So, anyways, that's all I've got for today. I think I'm going to go inside and watch TV. I'm getting bored of kind of getting, running out of the spark on getting this thing done. So much to do and so, 
get the fuselage out, you kind of run out of steam. Anyways, until the next video, we'll see y'all back here in the shop and probably have a CNC router by then. So anyways, y'all have a great week. We'll see you later.